we've got the cord all done out. Now we're just going to go ahead and feed it in uh, the bottom down here, like so. And we're going to go ahead and hook up uh, the bottom first. This and we're going to go white, red, green, and black. And that's how I have my outlet hooked up uh, in the garage. So I'm going to stick with the same L's, L1 and 2, or L, uh, L1 and R2, depending on how you call it. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. And then this is going to be my return to ground. So let me get these screws out. Oh, these, by the way, they come out like this. And they make it real easy for you to, uh, to work on them. Let me get this screw out, and then I'll show you putting it on. All right, I've got it out, so now I'm going to run this into here and get my screw in there. And make sure this little tab stays in here. This is an anti-rotation tab, this is. And it goes in the anti-rotation hole. And you just screw it down. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the others, and then we'll show you putting them in. Well, we have all the wires hooked up to the terminals now. So let's go ahead and get them installed. Uh, this one is the furthest back, so I'm going to put it in first. Uh, let's set it in here like this. And notice there's little keyways here. So you want to make sure that your terminals come out this way or your wire comes out that way. And it goes in there like that. Just push it down. Next one we have is the uh, red one. So let's go ahead and push it in. And you can wrap it down around underneath. Uh, the next one we'll use is the the black one so let's get it in right there wrap it down underneath right up through here and the last one we have is is your ground and we're going to push it up in here like this and then push this down here and then this cord has to go up inside like that and it's nice because there's there should be enough room up in here for this for these things to move around. So let's get this uh, up in here, and we're going to turn this over, and then we're going to tighten up the the strain relief clamp. And the nice part I like about this strain relief clamp is that it actually comes with a plug here. So if you have a bigger wire, like say a, a six gauge wire. Uh, you can pull this out, or maybe even an hot wire of some sort, or maybe not an hot, but but a four gauge. So you've got a you've got different levels of uh, crimp space, and we want to make sure and get this probably about a half inch up in there. That's about it, and then get this tightened down. So let's get this tightened down, and then we'll go on from there. All right, we have uh, we've put it in, and actually. Even with this, it's not quite good enough. You can see it can still pull out, and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some electrical tape around this to raise it up a little bit. Better yet, I got a better idea. I'm going to use some of the, uh, the used jacket right here. I'm going to cut this off and put it on it, and that way it's, uh, it won't slip or something like electrical tape might uh, slip. So we'll, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show that to you. Hold on. Well, we have the uh, we have the new uh, insulator in here to help close up that gap, and it did very very well. Uh, it won't budge at all now. It's down tight enough. All right now, when you put the wires in here, you want to make sure that you don't have any of those wires in this these areas right here. And the reason for that is is because that's where the screw holes are, and they smash down, and you don't want your wires smashed. So now that I've got that on there, let's just go ahead and put the lid on here. And then we'll go ahead and screw the other side down. Right, here we go. Now uh, we've got the top on it now. We have to put the screws in it. And they just go in here. And you uh, screw them down. I already got the other one in right here. So let me get them screwed down for you. All right. Got them all screwed down. It's all done. So now all we have to do is put the cover back on this. And uh, I'll give it one last good inspection. Make sure everything. These are, by the way, are part of the uh, um, the stinger switch for, uh, I believe, the relay control. And then there's your feed board down there, and your interconnect relay. And there's your feed rate resistor right there. 
So I think we got this uh, pretty much done. These are nice and tight. These are up in here good. Looks like these are on here fairly well. Eventually, I would like to go ahead and change these out and use the type of switch that actually has uh, screw terminals on it so that I know I have a very good uh, contact in here. So, Well, that's it for now. Let's get the cover on it, and then we're going to move on to installing a, a bottle and a regulator over here. I don't like this. I think it's a little too loose right here. I don't like the way that, that wiggles. I think it's... Uh, I think there's a problem there so we're gonna have to probably take this off put a small clamp on it and I'll probably put some RTV around it to make sure that it, uh, that it stays uh, sealed up so talk with you all later all right we're gonna go ahead and put these uh, put this back together we're gonna uh, put the cover back on it uh, but I did want to show you something um, the handle has longer screws so when you take it apart, make sure you put the handle screws back in, and the shorter screws are actually for the case. Now the other thing is, is when you take this apart, uh, these get little burrs on them, so be careful. I already cut my finger on one. I took a file and kind of knocked them down a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this cover back on. Uh, one of the things you have to do is when you put the cover on, uh, that side... Don't forget to unlatch it and uh, stick it back on there. So, so let's see, put this on here. It goes on really super easy. Sorry for that, just line all the holes up and then just put all the screws in. You can put the, uh, you can put the handle on first if you want, it doesn't matter, just put them all in. And don't tighten them all down. First, uh, put them in loose and then tighten them down after you got them all in. All right, we're putting the handle on. And we're doing the back one at the same time. All right, we got this one pretty much on. And we're putting in the other screws now. All right, there we are. They're all put together. We've got the uh, upgraded heavy duty 10 gauge cable on it so now we can go up to 29 feet with this and not have to worry about tripping the breaker or anything so all we have to do now is do the mods on the inside put improved fans in it and then maybe we can get a little bit of more duty cycle out of it um, I think the cable and the connector and stuff was about $75 um, I can always take the cable off and put it on another welder if I want I kept the old uh, uh, cable actually it's uh, it's right here here you go so I mean <laughs> you can see there's there's a serious difference between those so this one I can take the welder further away from the outlet and not worry about it uh, drawing too much current from the wall or anything or I don't want any current problems and this is going to solve that problem so all I have to do is worry about the limitations of the welder itself and not the power cord on it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment. Give me other suggestions. I've seen some guys where they said they put mods or capacitor mods or solenoid mods. And I'd really like to see your different type of mods and stuff so I can play around with this. Not a professional. Have no intention of becoming a professional. But this is going to be my hobby welder. So I'll do miscellaneous mods to it and... If I decide that I need to get more serious, well then buy a better welder or something and sell this. It's not a big deal to me. Y'all have a good one. Thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the power, the added power uh, mod to it. And send me, send me a little text or video message of your mods. Thanks guys. Bye.